the Lord fixed it where we could walk with him. That's right. So you mean people walk with God today? No, I walk with God. Ain't it walk with God? So I believe we walk with the Lord today. Be me here tonight at 6.30. Come back. Service tonight at 6.30. And uh, be with us. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter number 11. St. Luke chapter number 11. My scripture read. Thank you for being here today. If I have anybody visiting with us, glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Hope you want to come back and uh, worship with us again. Luke chapter number 11. And I'm going to start reading the verse one, number 1. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also told his disciples. He said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, verse 9. And I say unto you, Ask, it shall be given you, seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth him, that knocketh, it shall be open. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask, uh, ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Now there's one more verse over in Matthew chapter, you don't have to turn, but in Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 11 reads almost like verse 13. And it said, if you then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father Give good things to them that ask him. The only difference said here, he gives to them the Holy Spirit, which is a wonderful thing. We can't do anything without him. But it said over in Matthew, uh, he'll give us good things. That covers a, a greater territory, I guess you'd say, and more things. In fact, the Bible said, ask, it'll be given. Just whatsoever we ask the Father in the will of God, he promised he'd give it to us. And what a blessing from God. We're not going to preach on them verses. We're going to preach from verse 1. Look at it again. Bible said it came to pass when he, he had he, when he was praying a certain place when he ceased he ceased from praying one of his disciples said unto him Lord teach us to pray Amen. and that's a very little simple subject but that's what I want to preach on today Lord teach us to pray and my text is uh, I'm preaching on learning how to pray. Amen. You say that sounds kind of funny, kind of strange, I guess, learning how to pray. But let me say this to you in the beginning, that every great person or done a great work for God in the Old Testament, in the Bible day, even in the sense of Bible day, they've been a prayer warrior. I'm talking about somebody that stayed in touch with God. Amen. And so if we're going to do a work for God, we're going to have to stay in touch with the Lord. And uh, uh, Noah was a great man. Enoch was a great man. They prayed. Abraham prayed. Jacob prayed. Moses prayed. Elijah prayed. Daniel prayed. The early church prayed. And look what God done for them. Amen. 
And it's yet to be seen what God would do with this church if we'd just pray like we ought to pray. Right. Now, now, I ought to say this, I know, and I've been the way for a good while now, and I, I know that I'm not going to get everyone praying like they ought to pray. But if I could only get one or two young men, young ladies or middle aged to get their prayer life, I mean daily, daily, dedicated to the will of God, uh, there ain't no telling what it'd be worth to them down the journey. Right. To pray and get in touch with God. So he said, teach us. Teach us to pray. You say, what, uh, how in the world can you teach anybody how to pray? We teach our children everything else, don't we? Yes, sir. Amen. I mean, that little baby's helpless and can't do anything. And when he's real little, but a little bit later, he uh, sets up, we call it sitting alone. A little later, start crawling. And then they... Uh, Maybe they start to uh, eat a little and, and then they start to uh, walk in a little bit and uh, take a few steps and they'll fall and we'll help them up and they go again. That's the way it is in our Christian life. And then after that, uh, they get to running. A little bigger, they start riding bicycles and a few years later, they start driving cars and what is it they're growing? And I ought to say that uh, this business of being a Christian, it's a something we grow into. That's right. Amen. Now, I want to tell you, I'm not, I'm not saying you work your way into anything like that to get saved. I'm talking about I'm preaching to folk that are saved. I'm talking about after we get saved, it's something we grow into. Now, Jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint. Right. He said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. You say, uh, I think we need to dig a little deeper and preach on something a little bit deeper. If we want to go deeper with God, we first going to have to start praying. Right. That's first step in going deep with God. And so uh, our prayer life needs to be straightened out and uh, do what God wants us to do. And let me say this to you. you. You don't learn how to pray very much in church. You ought to go to church and I ought to go to church. But you don't learn too much about praying in church. You say, uh, how did I learn how to pray? You got to pray. Yep. We can talk about praying. We can say prayer changes things. We can say we ought to pray more. It won't get us nowhere. The only thing that'll work is praying, 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 and praying more. Amen. Amen. And you learn how to pray by praying. Amen. Let me give you an example. Avery back here. I think he's been a preaching two years long about this time. I think I'm right about that. Well, he's grown up and coming along real good and making a good preacher. And for two years, I think he's doing wonderful well. And uh, but if 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 two years ago he had said, uh, I feel like the Lord wants me to preach. And then he went to another church and stood up and said, I feel like the Lord's calling me to preach. And uh, then if he uh, went along a little while and, and uh, told his best friends, I feel like the Lord wants me to preach. And if that's all he'd ever, if that's far as he'd ever got, he'd still be wondering today whether he could preach or not. Right. I mean, the only way to learn how to preach is preach. And the only way to learn how to pray is pray. Uh, right. And so we need somebody to pray and call on God. And uh, just to talk about it won't get the job done. Now, I, my dear old dad been in heaven 45 years longer than that again. But he, 
My dad learned me more, and I know some great preachers and a lot of my heroes and things, but I'll tell you, my dad learned me more about praying than any preacher I've ever met, anybody I've ever met. He taught me to pray. He didn't say, now, son, you do it this way. No. Never in his life did he say that. I didn't ask him. I just followed him around. The time I was a little old boy growing up, and I wanted to pray like my daddy prayed. And I'd follow him down the woods to pray. And I'd hear him pray at the family all at the house. And I'd hear him pray in church. And I somehow just wanted to pray like my daddy prayed. And I followed him around. And he was my example. And buddy, I want to tell you, as far as prayer is concerned, he was a good example. He prayed. He called on God. And so I watched him pray. And I wanted to pray like him. And God in heaven, I'm telling you today, if you want to pray and stay in touch with God, God puts that in your heart. You need to lay aside everything and follow God and take time to pray. Amen. And, uh, but uh, I'll say this to you. Before you're going to do much praying, you have to learn something else. You're going to have to learn how to forgive. Right. Very little praying we're going to ever have to ever get done with a grudge in our heart, bitterness in our heart, hatred in our heart towards somebody else. Our prayer life is bogged down, buddy. Now you can call me what you want to. You can say what you want. I don't do. I don't have a landing thing to do with. I'm telling you the truth from God's word. The Bible said here, said, forgive us of our sin as we forgive everybody. It's in that it does. Right. That's why the Lord said pray, buddy. Yes, that ain't my deal. That's what the Lord said. Yeah. And the Bible said, if we forgive not our brother's trespasses, neither will our heavenly Father forgive us. Right. So when we learn how to forgive, we start learning how to pray and get in touch with God. Yeah. Uh, there's three things. I, they taught us this when I was trying to get a little more schooling 35 years ago or something like that, I guess. And when it was in school business, and I schooled some and tried to learn a few things. But they taught us this. You have to have three things to learn. There's three things to learn. And I never have forgot that. Three things. You know what them three things is? If you're going to learn, you've got to have a textbook, you've got to have a teacher, and you've got to have a student. That's the only three things you have to have to learn anything. We got them all. This is our textbook. The Holy Ghost is our teacher. And we're the student. And if we don't learn how to pray, it's our own fault. Right. We got everything that we need to help us to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ in these last days. Right. I got five points. And uh, I want to hurry through them today and give you five things. First of all, I want to say we, learn, we need to learn how to pray with confidence. Yes. Yeah. Now, the Bible said in John 5, this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. Do you know that he hears you? We know that he hears us. Right. And we know that if he hears us, we know we have the petition that we desire of him. The Bible said in Hebrews, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe he is, and that he is reward of them that diligently seek him. Y'all ever heard that verse read? I preached about that last Sunday. Huh? And... Uh, we're going to have to believe that God is a rewarder of them that doesn't say. We're going to have to have confidence in God. We're going to have to believe God's going to do what he said he'd do. If we're going to get much praying done, we just got to believe that. And the Bible said the just, the just shall live by faith. Amen. But what we see is not faith. But I'm proud, thank God, one day after a while, our faith is going to end in sight when we get home to be with the Lord. Right. But while down here we're living by faith. The Bible said, if you abide me in my words, abide in you, ask what you will shall be done unto you. When I preach it, when I think about having, praying with confidence, I think about Brother Gideon in the Old Testament. Now the children of Israel, they was in bondage. They were, or, 
uh, captivity, I guess would be a better word, to the Mediates. And they'd taken them and captured them. And there's down there and the Mediates is making the awful hard on them. The Bible said when the, the children of Israel would plant anything, the Mediates would come through behind them, they'd pluck it up before it had time to grow and, and uh, mature and fruit, get fruit on it. And uh, uh, the Mediates would pluck it up. And they was kind of on starvation just about it. And it didn't have much to eat, much to go on. They was in bondage bad. But the Bible said the angel of the law appeared unto Gideon. And to get it, you know where Gideon's at? The Bible said he's down on a big old tree thrashing out a little wheat. And I've always pictured in my mind that they're having such a hard time and Mediates plucking up what they planted. I just figure that Gideon's down there thrashing out a little wheat, trying to get the family to survive on until they could do better. But then he had thrashing out wheat. The angel of the Lord appeared and said, Gideon, thought a, a great man of that. And uh, said, I'm with you. And he said, Lord, if you're why in the world, why in the world is all this happening to us if you're with us? And he said, I'm going to use you to deliver Israel out of the hands of the media. No, oh, he said, Lord, I, I not me, not me. He said, my father's house, the poorest in Israel, and I'm the smallest in my father's house. But the Lord said, no, get it. I'm going to use you. Don't you know Gideon tore all the pieces? Yes, he was. Had the fear of God in his heart. I'm sure he did. But anyhow, the angel of the Lord said, uh, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you to deliver Israel. And uh, Gideon said, Lord, if you go really going to use me, if you're going to deliver Israel with my hand, i got to know about it. i got to have confidence. i got to have enough faith to get this job done. And Gideon said, Lord, I want to put a fleece of wool out here on the floor tonight. And in the morning, I want you to let that fleece of wool be wet with dew. Let the ground be dry all the way around it. And uh, so he put that fleece out there that night. And the next morning, the Bible said he looked out there, what there where that fleece is at, and he got it. And he rang it together. And he rang a bowl full of dew out of that fleece. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying if it had been kindly damp, it'd have been pretty good. I'm saying if a little water's are dripping out of it, it'd have been real good. <laughs> but it wasn't neither one. <laughs> God let it have a bowl full of dew in that fleece. And what I'm trying to say is, God don't want us to wonder where He's with us or not. He wants us to have that confidence. He wants he wants us to believe, thank God, that he's with us. Amen. And he's going to do what he said he'd do. And so he rung a bowl full of dew out there. And God used him to deliver Israel. And some have said, I've been young. And now I'm old. But I've not seen the righteous forsaken to receive begging bread. Let's get back to this confident thing. Philippians 1 and 6 said we're confident of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, God in heaven is still answering the prayers of the saints of God. You say, I wonder. I used to really believe that, but I, 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 my life's so full of doubt and fear, and I, I, I don't know now. I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of wandering around, drifting with the tide. God don't want you to be that way. Right. He wants you to have that full of shirts in your heart that God in heaven is still answering prayer, thank God. Yes, sir. We need to learn to pray with confidence. Number two, we need to learn to pray with compassion. God help us. Oh, Lord, put that compassion and love in our heart. The Bible said in the book of Jude, but ye beloved, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And then the next verse said of some, have compassion, making a difference. And I want to tell you this Sunday morning, that compassion really, really does make a difference. That's right. Bible said when Lazarus had died, they sent for Jesus. And we know this. We know Jesus. He, he knew the end from the beginning. He knew how this thing was going to wind up. You didn't worry about that. The Bible said he come over there where they was at and the Jews was weeping and crying. Martha and Mary, they was weeping, they was crying. And the Bible said that Jesus wept. 
If Jesus loved them enough to have compassion on this, them and we put them, we'll have compassion in our life for other people today. Amen. You're right. And uh, I'll just say this. I, if I don't, if I'm not broken about a matter, if I make prayer requests and I'm not, and I'm not broken about it, why in the world should I expect you to get broken about it? I mean, I wasn't supposed to get broke first. And if you make a request, you weren't supposed to be broke first. And then tell the rest of us about it. You say, I don't know about that. I'm telling you the truth. Them old timers, I, oh Lord have mercy. I remember the times back in, when I was growing up and a teenager and then after I got grown, and them mothers weeping and praying and, and tears dripping down on that old wood floor this puddle up around the altar where they was weeping and praying for their children or neighbors and lost loved ones and men weeping and crying. And you say that's a sign of weakness. That's a sign of getting close to God, buddy. The Bible said the Lord's not to them that's a broken heart. But they'd weep and cry and get, and get in touch with God and God do things for them. But I don't tell you one thing that's wrong in our church. It's not only here. It's just almost cross the board, I guess it'd be. But one thing that's wrong in our churches, we've got two men. I'm not telling you, quit making prayer requests. I know, I've never told nobody, I'll never tell nobody that. But I want to tell you one thing that's wrong. We have too many prayer requests with dry eyes and a cold heart. Oh, yeah. right. yes, sir. And it don't mean a lot. That's a pretty blunt point, but I'm going to say it don't mean a lot if we're not broken a little about what we're praying about. And uh, so, uh, so we, 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 we too many dried eyes. We don't have any tears. Need to pr need to pray God to give us our tears back, and uh, we need a warm heart. And uh, I tell you, if our hearts warm, I guess a few tears will flow out of our eyes when we get a warm heart. Jeremiah said, "Oh, my head with water, and mine eyes have found a tear that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people Israel." David said, "All night long, make my bed and swim, and water my couch with tears, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that go forth weep a barren precious seed shall doubtless come again. We rejoice in bringing his sheaves with him, and on and on. So many scriptures we can talk about today, but I'll tell you, we need a broken heart, and we need to have compassion when we pray. We need to pray with compassion in our heart and in our life. I tell you, it used to work. It'll still work. It'll always work when we get broken for those." we pray in vain. I think about Hezekiah and uh, talking about that compassion. Hezekiah, I'll just read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah's a good man. Now I know at the end his house kind of got fouled up and messed up. But uh, when he was just a boy, he started reigning when he was just a boy over Israel, over Jerusalem. And uh, the Bible said that Hezekiah did what was right in the sight of God. Yes, sir. You can't improve on that to save your life. And he was just a child, but said he did what was right in the sight of God. And Hezekiah, I think, lived a good life, majority of his life. And he was living right and doing right. But he come to his old age, and his sons had kind of messed up. And uh, you know the story if you read the Bible, it's just getting all that. But anyhow, the Lord told Isaiah, the prophet said, I want you to carry Hezekiah's message. You go over and tell him, he better set his house in order, for he's going to die and not live. So the prophet went over to Hezekiah's house and said, Hezekiah, the Lord told me to tell you, you better set your house in order. You just going to die and not live. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and began to pray and cry. He didn't only pray, but he cried. The Bible said he started praying and crying. He turned his face to the wall and said, Lord, you remember how I woke before the perfect heart, tried to do what's right, tried to live for you, tried to be a Christian, do what's right in your sight. And Lord... I need some help. I need you to help me. And guess what? The Lord nudged the prophet. He was going out the gate probably and he nudged him and said, I want you to turn around and go back. I want you to carry Hezekiah another message for me. He said, you go back there and tell him that I've heard his prayer and I've seen his tears. I'm going to add 15 more years to his life. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, tear will move the heart of God. If we could only pray with covenant and pray with compassion in our life, it ain't no telling what God do for. That's right. Amen. And then uh, we need to learn how to pray consistently. <clears throat> consistently. Everybody ought to have a time to pray. Everybody ought to have a place to pray. 
I wouldn't live nowhere if I couldn't have a place to pray. Guess everywhere we've ever lived, I've had a different place. Well, no, it's a different place, but that's what I'm talking about. One time I might go out to the church to pray if I live close enough to the church. One time I might pray in, in my study. One time I might go out behind the barn. But I've always said, I tell you, everybody will have a place to pray. Right. Yeah. Uh, guess where I got that from? My daddy. No matter where we live, where we moved to, we moved a lot back in them days. He always had a place to pray. He'd find a place to pray. And I believe everybody will have a place to pray. And I believe everybody will have time to pray. And the Bible said we ought to pray without ceasing. Yep. Somebody says, that means 24 hours a day. You know better than that. You, I'm looking at a smart bunch of people. Y'all know better than that. Now, if you want to pray 24 hours, I'd be wonderful. I wouldn't tell you not to. But we sleep about eight or nine hours a day. How are you going to pray there? Well, you know I ain't talking about praying 24 hours a day. And uh, you can go down the road praying in the car or washing dishes at home or working or sawing or hammer, whatever you're doing. You can go with a prayer on your heart. I know that. I know that. And we all do that. I'm not telling you. We all do that. But I ain't what that verse talking about. I'm convinced of that. I've studied on that a few years back. It said to pray without ceasing. Yep. And I remember they used to have them attractive meetings. We don't have them no more. We might have a revival in February and one in November and then one in December. You can we have, but that, they didn't do that back then. I mean, buddy, they, every church in this part of the country had a set time for their revival. July, June, July, and August. Most time it's June, July. Had a set time for Attractive meetings, they called them. So they'd have somebody, and, and people farm back in them days, most of them did. I guess that's the reason they call it this. But then sometimes people come in there, they get revived up and, and fired up, some of them would. And uh, I've heard people say that, them that had done it before, and they know their lifestyle again, said, I guess they just got roast in their religion. And, uh, but anyhow, they'd get fired up. And guess what? When it started frosting and got a little cold in the fall, you didn't find them no more. They wasn't back at church no more. That's praying a little while and ceasing a while. Praying a little while and ceasing a while. That's what that verse does. It said pray without ceasing. Amen. You ought to pray in January, February, and got time to all, and December, and everywhere between there. Amen. That's right. Amen. We pray, all to pray, all to pray, all to pray every day. Pray without ceasing. And then uh, Jesus said, Men are always to pray and not to fail. And so we ought to pray, 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 and call on God. And uh, uh, what I'm trying to say, don't give up. Don't give up. Things get a little rough, Lord, have mercy. Don't. I mean, the Lord's looking for somebody, somebody to stay with stuff. Anybody pray when the sun's are shining. Yep. Anybody pray when everybody's well. Anybody pray when everything got a good job, good pay coming in, everything like that. Good house to live in, good car to drive, nothing going wrong. Anybody pray a little bit right then. But I tell you, we need somebody to stay with stuff. It don't matter how rough it gets. It don't matter how hard it gets. We need somebody to still find them a place somewhere. Call on God. Talk to God. Amen. Pray consistently, amen. God knows what we mean now. And I've been praying. <laughs> In fact, no, I don't remember my, I, I, not too much of my life. I remember when I was in the family altar. Mom and Daddy prayed at family altar. Mom read the Bible, Daddy prayed. And uh, we prayed ever since, prayed, had family altar since we've been married. Working on 63 years now. And uh, so we have a, all the prayer to have. Now there's been a few times that, a uh, few times that uh, he didn't get out of the ceiling. <coughs> I know that. Wally would be a little ill at me. I might be a little ill at her. Y'all wouldn't believe that, would you? But things weren't going good is what I'm trying to say. We're a little crossed up. Oh. You say we've never had a, we've never had a cross word. No, but you lie a whole lot. I guess lying's worse than having a cross word. Ain't can't nobody live together that long and having a cross word. Hey, let me tell you what Brother Cape said. You know what he said? 
I heard him say one time, said, me and my wife has never gone to bed and sleep a mad at one another since we've been married. But he said, we've sat up a lot of nights. How's <laughs> Brother Capey? The things are not going good. Well, I didn't finish the story. What I started to say, I might have got defeated as far as getting a prayer food. But I didn't get defeated on putting forth an effort. Thank God I'd read the Bible. Get out of it. will make you feel a little bit better just to read some Bible. Yeah. So I'd read the Bible first and I'd get out and I'd pray and I'd do my best. I'd try to pray what I got through or not. I gave it a try. You stay with it. You never know. The next time, next night, you might get over top of the hump and get over the mountain. Yeah. Hang in there with it, buddy. I'm say. Stay with it. Stay with it and pray. Yes, hey. The Bible said, even morning and noon will I pray and call on the Lord. I read that scripture, you used to kind of wonder about that. What do I do say morning, noon, and even? That's the way we know it. But no, he said, even and morning and noon will I call on thee and thou shalt answer me. You know why I put it like that? If I could have you to vote, and I'm not going to. But if you, anybody in this building, and you just pray one time a day, I guarantee it's of a night. Close the day, it's evening. That's when I started praying, having family altar. And I'd at least pray that time of day. Try to pray more, but I'd pray that time of day. And then I, I know, I was working for carpet mill over at Dalton a long time ago now. But uh, I never eat any breakfast, didn't like breakfast. I couldn't eat breakfast when I was young. But I put it away pretty good now, but I I, I wasn't hungry when I got up. I, I'd just get up and we'd go to work early and I'd go to the refrigerator and drink me a little glass of milk about that high. Drink a glass of milk, get in the car and go to work. And I, I never eat no breakfast. But I got thinking one day, I need to take time to pray before I go to work. And so I started praying every morning before I left home many years ago. And then, so, of course, after I quit doing anything, you know, I turned above, above 65 and, and didn't work much. Then I started praying at dinner time. So that's what he fixed. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you again, if you'll just pray one time a day, I guarantee it's the evening. If you pray two times a day, I almost guarantee it's the evening and morning. And if you pray three times a day, it'll be even more than noon. And that's what he said to her. He said, I'll call on the Lord at even, at morning, and at noon, amen. And between times would be good for all of us, just call on between times. Now, I know some people's got more time praying to have us, but I tell you, we ought not to read love story books, newspaper, and play with her. You don't want me to say that, do you? You know what I'm talking about, these computers and phones and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll not do that six, eight hours a day and not even call on God. You're right. That's hey, wrong. Man. That's wrong. That's wrong as it can be. Hey. And uh, so we need to take out a little time and pray and call on God. We ought, to, we ought to pray consistently. And then we ought to pray with our children. Yeah. See how much time I've got. i got a few more minutes. And, uh, not long, but i got just a few more minutes. We ought to pray with our children. Fella told me one time, preacher. Supposed to have been a preacher. I told somebody this and they said, I don't know if he's a preacher or not. <clears throat> but he told me, he said, I just can't pray in front of my kids. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? He told me. I mean, he told me straight forward. I just can't pray in front of my kids. It made me wonder a little, to be honest. But, but we ought to pray with our children. Hey, if you miss the opportunity to pray with your children, and especially while they're little and growing up, you miss the greatest opportunity your whole life. Amen. You're right. And pray with them while they're little. And uh, Job said, my children may sin, curse God in their heart, and I'm just going to offer sacrifice for them. <laughs> he did it every day. Continually he done that. The Lord said, I know Abraham. He'll command his children after him. Now I tell you, you ought to gather them around and read the Bible and pray every night before you go to bed. That's right. Now I'm preaching about praying. Now I ain't talking about the Lord lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord my soul to keep, and 
thank you for the food I ate. Now that's good for children, but we're grown folk. We're adults. We've been this way a long time. That kind of praying is for the children. We need to call on God. We need to pray. Get in touch with God. Amen. 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 These last day. Lord, let our children hear us pray. Train up a child in the way she goes, his old and not depart from it. The Bible said that from a child I'll know the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. So I ought to pray with them. I've told y'all this little story about Doyle, I guess. Eh? And uh, when the, when the, he was a little boy, about a two year old, three year old. How old are you when you start getting hired? Cause he was two year old, two and a half, something like that. And we lived over here, Murphy Road Road, not on that hill, and I had a, a little rock altar thing down behind the house in a pine thicket, and I'd go down there and pray, and that rock altar sat on a little plank there and lean back against a tree, shut the Bible, and I'd pray down there. And uh, so he'd go down there with me sometime. He knew where the place was at. And sometimes he'd go with me to pray and so on the knee while I prayed. But anyhow, he didn't like to get a haircut when he was little. We went to church one Saturday, get a haircut. Or get groceries, whatever went for, and he go, he got a haircut, and I told him before we went. I said, "Now, boy, you you, if you have a fit this time, when to cut your hair, I'm gonna give you a whoop, good whooping when we get home. If you cry, get your haircut, I'm gonna." So went to the barber shop. Guess what? Wasn't no different. It's like it always been. He had a little fit on him, cried. But it's a couple hours before we got home. We went and bought groceries. And few things like that while I was in town. You know, everybody worked, used to work five days, went to town on Saturday. It wasn't weekend if you didn't go to town. So we went up to Chatsworth and, and bought groceries and things like that. When we got back home, we unloaded them groceries. And uh, so I went around the corner of the house there and I said, uh, come on, son, let's go. And he run around where's that said, Daddy, what are we gonna do, go pray? I melted my tracks. He just melted me down. I know he'd been used to going down that little rock all with me. And ain't no way I could give him a whooping in. He got out of that. I just talked to him a little, which went on parade. <laughs> but I ought to say this. You ought to pray before you're... They ought to hear you praying while they're little. Amen. 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 Pray with your children. Pray with your children. If you don't ever do anything else good, pray with your children. I got to close. Quitting time. But we need to pray with courage. Learn to pray with courage. That's when the odds are against us. As I said a while ago, anybody can pray when the sun shine, everything going good. But Eli Elijah, he was a man of the like Pastor. We are. And he prayed earnestly. It wasn't rain. It didn't rain for three years. Six months. Prayed again. They hadn't gave rain. The earth brought forth the fruit. But at that particular time, all the odds was against him. He had to have courage when he went out there to Mount Carmel that day. And he prayed, he prayed. 450 prophets of Baal, he slew them down the brook. Jezebel was mad at him. He had the wicked king that was all mad at him, all the odds was against him. But Elijah went up there to pray. I'm still talking about praying. Elijah went up there to pray for rain. And he sent the servant out there and see if he could see a cloud. And he said, didn't see that first time, second time, third time, but seventh time he said, I see a cloud like a man's hand. And uh, Elijah had been praying, calling on God. And Elijah said, Hey, you better get off of this mountain. I hear a sound of abundance of rain. And he got so excited, he outrun the chariot back down to the city. And uh, so God had answered his prayer. And he prayed with courage, even though all odds was against him. Nobody at that particular time seemed to be on his side. But he prayed. He believed God. God said he'd do it. Elijah prayed and God did do it. Amen. Amen. So we need some of that kind of courage when we pray. Just believe God's going to do it. Now I want to pray so we are proud. I'm not asking nobody to make a commitment. And I, I, know, I know certainly what I'm about to say. I ain't going to make you a prayer warrior. But uh, maybe you want to come and pray. At least pray a little bit about your prayer life. 
and uh, kind of tighten up a little on your prayer life. Spend a little more time praying. Believe God when you pray. Pray with your children. Be faithful in praying. When the odds are against you, when chips are down, when the chips are up or whatever, pray and call on God. 